pleasure to welcome Kani Rabia to the Physics Seminar Series. Kani is, uh, is presently working in Frankfurt, Germany, and um, has had her previous before going to Germany. Her she, she had a PhD from Swiss, from from Sweden, from Augsburg, Germany. So, from, from Augsburg, Germany, yeah. sorry. And before that, she was at Qayyad Azam University. She is going to give um, this talk on structural and optical properties of transition metal compounds under pressure. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, first of all, thank you for giving me opportunity to talk about my uh, present research work or previous research work. So today I will talk about structural and optical properties of transition metal compounds under pressure. Okay, this is my PhD work. It was conducted at Chair of Experimental Physics 2 in University of Augsburg, Germany. But currently I am uh, working in University of Frankfurt at slightly different topics. Okay, here is the outline of the projects that I had been doing during my PhD. Uh, so I was working on various transition metal compounds, and these were investigated by high-pressure infrared microspectroscopy, except, uh, sorry, uh, except one system, beta-sodium vanadate, where we had done this X-ray powder diffraction to confirm the RAD structure uh, transitions, which were probed by Raman and uh, infrared microspectroscopy under pressure. But all other compounds were investigated by uh, high pressure infrared microspectroscopy. Okay, and another point is uh, that I was also working on instrumentation. So I was uh, so I was uh, I was supposed to uh, design and construct a, a microscope where we can measure. Uh, uh, where we can investigate the materials at low temperature under high pressure. So I will uh, uh, show you the optical layout at the end. Since there are various compounds, uh, so I can't uh, focus all the uh, all the compounds in one talk. So I will uh, today I will focus on uh, uh, pressure effect on the optical properties of chromium spinners and sorry optical properties of chromium spinners and the, uh, I will show the scheme of the uh, high pressure visible UV microspectrometer. So first I will begin with uh, why transition metal compounds are interesting and then I will uh, show the high pressure techniques used to investigate the material. Later I will uh, show the results of chromium spinners in, and explain them in detail. And uh, at the end, uh, the layout of uh, mic uh, visible UV microspectrometer for high pressure, low temperature study. So first of all, these transition metal compounds, they have a wider applications. Uh, and another thing, they, they show very interesting physical properties like uh, superconductivity, metal insulator transition, multiplicity, and many of them have a rich magnetic properties. Few properties are inherited, uh, uh, but some can be um, induced by external fields. And for all these fascinating uh, phenomena, the d orbital valence electrons play a main role. Because there's somehow their internal degrees of freedom, like spin, charge, and orbitals, are coupled in a way that they are very susceptible to any external influence like temperature, pressure, magnetic field, or electric field. But in my work, I, I, have, I have been using this uh, uh, pressure as an external field. So we, what one can do with pressure? When you apply a pressure, you change the atomic position of, of the system. And then you also change the uh, bandwidth of the uh, electronic states. and Okay, one can also apply a chemical pressure, but in, uh, that's not a cleaner way. With external pressure, you can tune the magnetic properties without doping any impurities or without changing the uh, uh, symmetry of the lattice. So that, that's a very cleaner way to uh, investigate the material under high pressure, under pressure.
this strange. Something happened. Sorry. No, this one it was fine. I have checked. <coughs> Sorry, honey. Uh, okay, here is an overview of uh, high pressure infrared microspectroscopy. Uh, so the system layout is you have a commercial Bruker uh, microspectrometer uh, where you can have uh, energy excess from 10 to 25,000 wave number. And then it is coupled to a microscope. The main parts of these microscopes are these two Schwarzschild objective. One is used as an objective to focus the light on the sample and another one used as a condenser for transmission measurement. Mm -hmm. And then you have here visible light source to view the sample. And uh, here you have a two detector positions and eyepiece where you, uh, you can monitor the sample. And uh, for pressure measurement, you, sh uh, uh, you shine this green laser and excite this ruby crystal in, uh, within a chamber uh, uh, of this pressure cell. And then you get this fluorescent signal and you collect it and send it to the spectrograph through this optical fiber where you measure this uh, uh, pressure. So how you measure pressure is uh, this characteristic ruby lines, which are called R1, R2 lines. These are very sensitive to temperature and pressure. So when you change the temperature or pressure, you see a uh, shift in the frequency position of these two lines. So uh, you, you calculate the pressure by, uh, by, uh, by this equation, where delta lambda is the change in the wavelength, and lambda naught is the uh, wavelength at ambient condition, A and B is the constant values. So in this way, you, 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 you calculate the pressure. But can I ask you, yeah. why is it that pressure and temperature act in the same way? Because they're two completely different things. Pressure, with pressure, you change the lattice constant. So yeah. the electronic structures change. But with uh, heat, all you do is thermalize it. So why is the same structure no, no, that, that's of absorption? All, sorry, that, that's only for room temperature. That, that relation is only for room temperature. That pressure relation is only for room temperature. Yes, but uh, you said that the shift yeah. happens either because of pressure or because okay, of temperature. Okay, with but temperature. It structure. Yeah. Why does it retain because structure? Because when, when you when you lower the temperature, you also change the uh, 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 symmetry of the uh, uh, system. No. Yes. How? It's when when uh, when you cool down the system, okay, you can't expect that it's 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 it stays the same. Yeah, but the symmetry doesn't change. It it changes when there's some uh, some phase transition, then structure is changing, then symmetry will change. Is that because of the phonons are making this expand or? No, it's it's uh, because because when when you when you change the temperature, definitely thermo uh, means you also change the uh, uh, bond length. And with this bond length, so your crystal field potential will change, and then this definitely splitting uh, this with this crystal field, changing crystal field potential. So you also change the uh, uh, means uh, electronic states. So splitting will be either uh, large or less depending on uh, how you uh, go for temperature. And then you, uh, when you excite it, so you see that it's at. Uh, different frequencies. Thank you. Okay, here's the picture of the uh, diamond animal cells used for this project. So it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's like a cylinder piston uh, mechanism. So you have uh, diamond uh, uh, anvil uh, one uh, fixed here, another you have a piston, then you 
mechanically apply this uh, pressure to this uh, through these two nodes, and you um, uh, tighten this clamp. <coughs> and uh, generating pressure in the in the in the diamond envelope cells. First of all, you have a, a gasket, and then you create uh, you made a hole in it, and you put your sample there and ruby crystal there, and then later you fill with the pressure medium. And uh, yeah, here, here is the uh, view in the cell. So you have a sample here. Here you have a ruby crystal, and that's the uh, diameter is 200 micrometers. So it's almost you can say 80, 80 micrometer, 80 to 50, uh, 80 by 50 micrometers is cell. So for for that cell, you have a killer size 400 micron, and uh, with this cell, you can uh, reach the pressure up to 20 GPa and pressure transmitting medium used it was cesium iodide and stainless steel gasket was used. So here is a measurement configuration. Do you use, why do you use cesium iodide? Because it scintillates so uh, there is a special reason why we use cesium iodide. Okay, cesium, or you can use also another pressure transmitting medium, but like if, if you go for helium, uh, okay, helium is uh, uh, like it's solidified at uh, 12 GPa, and then for cesium iodide, okay, it's not a very good hydrostatic pressure medium, but uh, I means like after 10 GPa, you can say that you are in a plus minus one GPa uh, error bar. And is 10 all your pressure in all your experiments is it uh, uh, isotactic, equal from all directions, or? You apply uniaxial pressure. No, it's it's, it's uh, from all directions. All direction. Yeah, that's why you are not supposed to f fill the cell with the uh, sample completely. You can't put a two. If there is a hole of two hundred micron, you can't put a sample almost two hundred micron. So now I understand why the, the heat and the pressure do the same work because they are both changing the lattice constant. Exactly. Yeah. So here is measurement configuration for reflection. Like for reflection measurement, uh, okay, in a simple way, sorry. Uh, you, you shine a light on the sample and then you get uh, uh, light intensely reflected from the samples. Okay, important point here is we used uh, diamond bottom as a reference and uh, since when you are measuring, uh, then you can't access to diamond bottom. So what you do, you measure uh, diamond top for each pressure, and then at the end, you, uh, when your measurements is finished, you uh, measure the ratio of diamond bottom and diamond top. And then to calculate the absolute reflectivity at sample diamond interface, you multiply with the reflectivity of the diamond, which, you, uh, which is 0 0.1667. And for uh, transmission me measurement, it's, uh, there are two different ways to uh, measure the uh, reference. Like in case of a bulk sample, what you do, you, you put the sample and ruby ball, and then you have a, uh, here uh, space to measure the reference uh, uh, parallel. But in case of powder sample, you don't have a control over it, so you fill the, whole, uh, uh, the complete hole. And then what you do at the end of the measurement, you fill this with the pressure medium and then measure the reference and uh, you, you calculate the transmission and finally the, ob the absorbance. Okay, with this, uh, means with infrared uh, um, technique, which it's, it's widely used technique, basically you can uh, probe from vibrational, uh, vibrational levels of the system to uh, electronic uh, uh, excitation and uh, means for this low frequency side for vibrational uh, stuff uh, it's it's more interesting in a way that the phonons uh, also phonon also influence the uh, spin correlations and also uh, in this way you can also see the uh, you can also understand the structural instabilities produced in the system uh, uh, through the behavior of the phonons. 
And uh, since it's, it's if, uh, I mean, spin correlation effects of phonon behavior, so it's, it's also considered as a complementary tool to uh, uh, probe the ma magnetic states of the system. Okay, now I will show the uh, results of the uh, chromium spinel compounds. Three chromium compounds were investigated, zinc chromium selenide, mercury chromium sulfide, and cadmium chromium oxide. So first I will give you an introduction of the material, including the crystal structure, and then what was the motivation behind this project. And uh, then I will discuss the re results in detail, like low frequency excitation separately, and then high frequency excitation. At the end, I will summarize my results. No, I mean, it's, it's spin, the spin latest coupling. I was talking about spin latest coupling. It means if if uh, spin correlations influence the uh, phonons, it means from the phonon frequency uh, behavior, like shift in frequency or splitting of the phonon modes, you can say that it's a, it's a, 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 a ferromagnetic or anti-ferromagnetic state. Okay, at the end, I will show you all these results. Okay, about this uh, uh, crystal structure of the spinel, it it's, uh, crystallizes in a, a normal uh, cubic crystal with space group uh, uh, Fe3 bar M, and it has a general formula Ab2x4, where A site is non-magnetic and B site is uh, 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 only chromium, it is a magnetic ion, and X site is uh, all these um, uh, diblent anions. But you see that this a, a site cations made, uh, uh, made a tetrahedra with oxygen or sulfide or selenide, depending on what material it is. And uh, for while uh, this group chromium. The symmetry group? Sorry? By space group, you mean the symmetry group of this crystal? Uh, no, with, with, with this space group, you have a different symmetries. So, what do you mean by space? What, what is space group? Uh, it's a cubic, uh, okay, I'm not, I'm not uh, good in this crystal uh, thing stuff, but uh, means when you, uh, it, like uh, when you have a cubic, that, that belongs to cubic uh, crystal structure. In cubic you have a different space group, then each space group have different symmetries. So this XRD people can tell. And chromium ions make, um, uh, make an octahedra with, uh, with, uh, with excite anions. And in the cubic unit cell consists of both octahedra and tetrahedra. And within this cubic unit cell, if you see the uh, uh, A-site sublatus, it looks like uh, a diamond, uh, diamond cubic sublatus while the chromium sublatus is like network of uh, this uh, corner shared tetrahedra, which is named as a pyrochlor lattice. And since spin resides on this pyrochlor lattice along this one one directions, which makes the system frustrated and Another important point here I want to mention is the uh, number of bonds. If you see the uh, chemical formula, you see the number of anions are more compared to the cations. So, uh, I didn't quite understand where, where would frustration come from? Uh, frustration would come from? Frustration would come from this, uh, from the chromium. Spins, spins on? Uh, electronic spins resides on this chromium ions. Okay. Chromium is a magnetic. So, which gives the frustration because it's. Uh, uh, I, I will show you where the uh, in the next because it's a tetrahedra, and it, it forms a six. Uh, means if you take a tetrahedra and each corner has one chromium ions, then basically you have six nearest neighbor interactions. Hmm. So, it means uh, all cannot satisfy. Like two, four of them can be uh, anti-parallel, but another two they they can't decide where to go. 
That's why it's, it gives uh, frustration to the uh, whole system. And uh, sorry. So uh, here, the number of bonds uh, between uh, anions will be more compared to the uh, bonds between uh, cations and anions. Okay, I, I'm, uh, I'm mentioning this point here because later the, uh, I will discuss the results in terms of uh, in terms of uh, chemical bonding and also the number of bonds in the system. Another important aspect of these uh, chromium uh, spinners is that on the X sides there there is. Uh, it's, it's one can substitute this oxygen uh, cell for selenide and telenide. Uh, t t t is it tellurium? Or t tellurium, sorry. Uh, so in this way, the physical properties uh, widely change from oxide to this chalcogenized materials. Okay, here A site is uh, non-magnetic, so the only magnetic ion is the chromium, uh, which is in octahedral crystal field. So under under this octahedral crystal field uh, action, this uh, 3D orbitals splits into low-lying T2G orbitals and uh, high-energy EG orbitals. And uh, uh, these T2G orbitals are uh, singly occupied, which gives the uh, uh, total spin uh, 3 by 2 to the system. Okay, if, if we see only the uh, chromium sublattice, Then it, it, it was a, a corner shared network of tetrahedra, and if you put the chromium ions on each, uh, each corner of the tetrahedra, then you see that there are, as I, as I told, there are six nearest neighbor interactions, like four will be uh, favorable, means they align anti parallel, but another two, like between one and two, and uh, between three and four, it's, it, they, they can't decide. So it's, it's, it's impossible in this uh, system to have all interaction favorable, and this makes the system frustrated. Uh, here's an interesting uh, uh, magnetic phase diagram of this uh, uh, frustrated uh, uh, chromium compounds. Okay, it's, it's uh, uh, I mean the characteristic temperature is uh, plotted against the acute revised temperature. And if you see above their critical temperatures going from left to right, where Q revised temperature increases, their latest constant increases, and also the ferromagnetic, it goes like anti-ferromagnetic to more towards ferromagnetic. So, so what's on the y-axis? It's, it's uh, uh, means uh, temperature what you uh, measure. Like if, if, if you measure uh, uh, through this infrared spectroscopy or some other, like uh, EPR, so you, or other, t uh, how to call it, is. What is CW? And you, you have temperatures on both axes. Yeah, that, that, that's basically, it's, 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 a, uh, it's a curie wise temperature. And that's the temperature about you, uh, that's the, current temperature where, uh, what you use to study the material for other techniques. No, no, this is not clear. Uh, you can't have two temperatures in a material, so it's in okay, you, you, uh, you, uh, it's So, can you some critical temperature? So, are you, as you're changing temperature, the critical temperature is changing. That doesn't make sense. Uh, 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 sorry, what, what do you mean? So critical you temperature, temperature in a way? The sam sample temperature? Yeah. I don't know if that's what you mean. Yes. And the critical temperature is changing or what? What's happening? No, it's, it's, it's a dif for different material, it's fixed. Okay. So then what's on the y-axis? And what are these curves? Okay, on y-axis, that's a uh, 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 means uh, 
means the temperature what you use to uh, how to say the temperature what you use to um, measure either by by some um, by some uh, EPR or another uh, technique, but, you're but th th that's that's like I mean for this like that's a, a zinc chromium oxide, okay? That's the Curie wise temperature for the zinc chromium oxide, and that's the uh, and you can. Am I right or wrong? No, it's that's a, that's in, in this. But we, we just need to understand first of all the y-axis, the temperature. Yeah, that's the temperature. Uh, how is that measured? And we need to know how the Curie wise temperature is measured. Okay, Curie wise temperature you measure by uh, uh, means this uh, through this magnetic uh, susceptibility. Okay, but measure what? Uh, That's okay. Uh, it means when you measure this Curie wise temperature, actually you you take this sky and then. Uh, Curie wise temperature point. is the temperature at which magnetism disappears. Yeah, you have a yeah, first it's, it's order phase transition. Too paramagnetic, okay. yeah. But then that depends upon uh, lots of complex things within the material itself. Yeah. Um, so that's a parameter of the solid. Yeah. How did you, how is it measured? Okay, uh. So what I can feel, or you do, I'm not sure what this is, but. Okay, that's, has, that's, uh, okay, that's not my. red dots for different materials. Uh, uh, okay. CCS, CCS. So that is the particular Curie voice, voice temperature exactly. of that material and that is measured by measuring the susceptibility, mm -hmm. the magnetic susceptibility versus temperature and extrapolating the curve back to one of the axes and th that's where the well, you say, okay, that's system will disappear. So the long range order mm -hmm. will disappear and will give way to paramagnetism. So for every sample, she has a sample point, these red dots or these black dots exactly. for every sample. But what I don't understand is what this x-axis is representing. Okay, you uh, uh, okay? You means why it's, it's representing? The y-axis must be the sample temperature. Yeah, that's the sample phase temperature. Diagram. Yeah. Plotting a phase diagram, generally phase that, diagram, that's the pressure versus temperature. But here we have two temperatures, so that's okay. You, you can call it some. Uh, maybe it's. I should. You can call it this some other. Okay. Sorry, I I I can't answer. Tell us a little bit about frustration also, since we are not experts. Okay, about frustration. Okay, uh, means here if you if you want to check the frustration of this uh, uh, these materials, like uh, frustration level of these materials. So basically, you divide uh, uh, this Curie wise uh, temperature uh, by this their critical temperature where where they uh, have this. Ordering. No, no. Uh, not have a, what is frustration? Oh. Okay, when uh, like uh, what is frustration when you have uh, not ordered uh, uh, symmetry and. Uh, Mm. It's frustration in a way. Different types of the bond and geometric, and so we don't know. Okay, okay. He, don't here, know. here, here. Uh, means when they call it, uh, basically that's a geometric frustration. They call because here uh, means uh, antiferromagnetic. Antiferromagnetic interaction is. Uh, more compared to ferromagnetic interaction because they are competing, okay, in case of frustration. But when we when you call this bond frustration, here antiferromagnetic and ferromagnetic interactions are almost of the same order. So it's it's just terminology where, where they use this as a bond frustration. 
and when you go here, you see uh, uh, you you get more ferromagnetic. Because okay, uh, here you have a small lattice constant. Okay, so direct chromium chromium uh, interaction is possible. Uh, shall I use that? that? Yeah. Okay, but but I understood from. Like, uh, suppose here you have, if you take this 90 degree, you have a chromium and oxygen or whatever, and then you have a chromium, okay? So if you have a smaller this ions and you have a, uh, uh, I mean, shorter bond length, and then they, they are close, if you go close, then basically you get more antiferromagnetic. Okay, because here you have a chromium. Here you have a chromium. So they are they are they are uh, uh, because they were very close. To, so they will try to align, and like that's up, that will be down, and when they are far, here you have a I means a, a bigger size ion. They are far, then you get. Uh, Mm, like uh, 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 means almost the equal order of magnet. Uh, it can be ferromagnetic or anti-ferromagnetic. So it it all depends how this latest constant. Uh, what's the size of the latest constant is? You understand my point? Sorry? And it says minus 400 Kelvin. Yeah. Can you really measure that minus 400 Kelvin? No, that, that's, that's the point where you, like, uh, if you, uh, I mean, uh, as uh, Dr. Servi uh, also mentioned, that when you measure this Curie wise temperature, you, you get this um, uh, through this magnetic susceptible, you, 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 ch you check the change in curves. And then you, then you uh, kind of uh, extrapolate it or where it cuts. So if it goes to the negative size, then you measure this as a negative. That's what I understood. I'm not. Uh, I'm not doing this. And so uh, the idea was that if you the idea was if if you if you st stay above this uh, critical temperature where where all the uh, systems go to anti-ferromagnetic and uh, take one compound from ferromagnetic and uh, apply pressure, then you can reach to the anti-ferromagnetic states. So for this reason, we, we had a preliminary uh, room temperature measurement for these uh, three compounds, this mercury chromium sulfide, which is, which is more towards ferromagnetic, and that's uh, zinc chromium selenide and another this antiferromagnetic cadmium chromium oxide. Okay, here is the uh, major data of the reflectivity uh, curve from uh, 200 wave number till 25,000 wave number for all these three compounds. And this low frequency site is plotted separately so that one can see the pressure effect on the phonon modes. And uh, for this, if, if you see for uh, uh, sulfide and selenide compounds, with increasing pressure, reflected level increases. But for oxides, you can't see any change in the reflectivity level at, in this high frequency range. But, but if, you, if you zoom in this, this frequency range, you see some uh, uh, transition, electronic transition. So to, to get access to these transitions, we have done this uh, absorption measurement. <coughs> so that's the uh, absorption spectra. So later for uh, in, uh, interpretation, uh, this absorption uh, spectra were used for cadmium chromium oxide, but for uh, sulfide and selenide, this reflectivity spectra. So here for uh, means sulf sulfide and selenide compounds, 
uh, first thing when, when you compress the latest phone on modes harden that's uh, uh, normal and uh, when you when you uh, reach around 10.3 GPA you see there's some uh, uh, anomaly and so this uh, high frequency mode disappears and for sulfide it disappears uh, after 12 GPA but for oxide it's uh, both phonon stays up to highest measure pressure 14 GPA. So theoretically from uh, latest symmetry point of uh, view there are four infrared active phonon modes. Here is the data of the uh, 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 experimental data of the uh, chromium spinels. And about the origin of these phonon modes it's uh, theoretically, it's in literature they say almost all the atoms contribute to each mode. The contribution of few atoms can be less or more uh, for different uh, uh, modes. For example, for this high frequency uh, mode, the contribution of A atom is uh, uh, less compared to the uh, compared to the uh, B side uh, uh, cation. While for the, for low frequency phonon modes, the uh, uh, the uh, contribution of B site is less and A site is more, so the uh, arrows length show the uh, contribution level of contribution. But in in, in high pressure data, you see only these uh, two high frequency phonon modes because of experimental limitations. Uh, which curve? I mean, <coughs> you showed the phase diagram yeah. in which each material is being probed at a particular temperature. Okay, that, that's that's not what I have done. That's a, a so what, what temperature are these curves at? Uh, so you're measuring the reflectivity, applying pressure. Uh, that's room temperature. That is room. Temperature. That is room temperature. All the measurements are room temperature. Okay, we, we, we know the fact that uh, means if you want to uh, see the magnetic states, low temperature is important, but uh, uh, one has to do f uh, get uh, first uh, room temperature data to what understand. What is the motivation of showing that phase diagram? Phase di motivation was the, uh, okay, it's means still in, uh, in my uh, previous group, people are doing this low temperature stuff. But for me, it's just there was no time to So it's it's a half way of this motivation. That's a, just a prelim preliminary test for uh, these compounds only at room temperature. Okay, and yeah, here here is the phonon parameter uh, extracted from the uh, fit of reflectivity by a simple Lorentz model, and you see the frequency damping and oscillator strength. About uh, uh, when you uh, see the infrared data, the oscillator strength of the uh, phonon modes tell the ionicity of the bond belongs to uh, that particular phonon mode. So if uh, higher the oscillator strength is, it, this tells us there's some more uh, ionic character of the bond belonging to that uh, mode. And to see the compressibility of the uh, of the phonon modes. Uh, I fitted the frequency position by uh, simple linear equations where omega naught is the uh, ambient uh, uh, frequency at ambient condition. That's a, a change in pressure and C is the um, linear pressure coefficient. So in going from frequency to the oscillator strength, yeah. you some kind of Lorentz model for electric dipole model. How do you make this transition from frequency to oscillator strength. Okay, you, you mean like uh, you have uh, you have your data, mm -hmm. so you, uh, you fit with uh, some dielectric uh, function, can be any uh, model, depend on which model fits your, uh, your data. 
So for this it was more, more or less symmetric and uh, I use this simple Lorentz model. Which is just uh, an oscillator. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Means there. Means it's. It's. Means it's not that. Uh, with that, you only see. Uh, means one mode. So there is not like a contribution of other modes. Okay. And there you you get the uh, frequency damping and oscillator strength of the. Okay, here is uh, uh, yeah, v value of C, and uh, it's for phonon mode one and two, like it's a high frequency or low frequency phonon modes. So lower the value of uh, C means the stiffer that bond is, and uh, if you see that the phonon mode two for each compound, which is uh, um, phonon mode two is have more ionicity, means have more oscillator strength compared to the phonon mode 1. And then from this uh, anomaly uh, for, for these two compounds in literature by uh, so this XRD about this cadmium chromium selenide, there was they, they, they predicted the structure phase transition from cubic to tetragonal phase. So we have also uh, interpreted in terms of structure phase transition for these two compounds and for uh, cadmium chromium oxide, we don't uh, up to uh, 14 GPA we don't see any anomaly, and uh, for Raman and XRD study of uh, this zinc chromium oxide material, which almost as, uh, from the same uh, family. Under pressure, they see some uh, a sluggish phase tra structure phase transition from which started at 17.5 GPA and, and, and uh, ends at 35 GPA, and that was from cubic to orthorhombic. Since uh, uh, for this studied compound, A site was uh, different. Besides this, uh, that uh, uh, X site is also different. So it's 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 uh, not easy to uh, compare all these uh, three compounds. So what uh, what I can do is that uh, means uh, if you c if you see that the volume of the uh, cubic spinners anions are more compared to the other uh, cations. So one can say that compressibility was mainly due to anions because the number of bonds, like, uh, I mean, anion bond, uh, bonds between anions are more compared to the others, as I mentioned before. And... Uh, What's an anion? Uh, that oxygen sulfur selenide. And the, like going from top to bottom, uh, ionic size increases. Uh, since I, I cannot I cannot compare this uh, bonding between A, A and anions, so what I can uh, see that the bond length uh, means between between anions and also between uh, chromium and anions. So by increasing the size of the uh, mm, anions, the bond length will increase, and if you have a longer bond length, it's easy to compress the compounds. So in this way, the bond compressibility in selenide compounds is more compared to the uh, sulfide and uh, oxide compound. So you see that the transition pressure, where the structure phase transition takes place, is for selenide compounds it's at 10 GPA, for sulfide it's 12 GPA, but from the phonons you can't see uh, structure phase transition in uh, oxide up to 14 GPA. So now see what happened to the electronic bands when you compress the lattice. Okay. 
here is a, uh, a curve in the high frequency range where the electronic transition can take place. So you have the real part of the optical conductivity. First with uh, increasing pressure, the spectral wave shifts towards the uh, uh, low frequency and if you see the first Meyer pressure at uh, 1.0 GPA, there is a, uh, there is a uh, prominent band. And this band, we interpreted it in terms of a DD uh, on-site on -site crystal field excitations. By spectroscopic uh, selection rules, is, uh, if you have a centrosymmetric complex, like you have a, uh, 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 this DZ square orbital of the transition metal lines in between two uh, anions, in that case, you, you will not have uh, any uh, DD transition because uh, your dipole moment is zero. But when you have some asymmetric vibration, that time the, you uh, change the parity. Now you don't have the same parity for initial and final uh, uh, state. So uh, now your dipole moment is not anymore zero. So you can uh, see this vibration DD. Uh, sorry, DD excitation. So, what are your initial and final states in, in that in exchange integral? Uh, I, will, I will show you. It's a D, means at later. So, here, um, here are these two compounds like uh, sulfide and selenide. But for, uh, for, uh, uh, for oxide compound, we have absorbance. And the, uh, f for oxide, with increasing pressure, the, this E1, uh, this, what we call this DD transition, first DD transition, is shift towards a higher frequency. From, like for chromium ion in octahedral environment, you have a three spin allowed transitions, DD transition. And the f first uh, DD transitions, you call it, that, the, that shows the uh, uh, splitting of the uh, splitting of the D orbitals in octahedral crystal field. And so here means when uh, means the low, f uh, the, uh, the E1, absorption band at low frequency tells that the splitting of the d orbitals in this compound is lower compared to the uh, other compounds. So here I compare the uh, sorry, even value for different compounds. You see for the oxides uh, compound it's higher compared to the other, t uh, other two compounds. Okay, since we have we have talked about that the, if, uh, when lattice is compressed, it uh, changes from uh, it changes the symmetry from cubic to tetragonal. If you if we consider the tetragonal uh, uh, symmetry at the transition uh, transition metal lines, then you see that uh, we we can suppose that the, if there is elongation along the z-axis and contraction uh, about other two axes, then we see that this. Uh, T2G, uh, T2G orbitals are, uh, I mean, the degeneracy of these T2G orbitals partially lifted and the EG orbitals becomes non-degenerate. And uh, in this way, if you, if you see that the, now, it's, if that you consider the initial state and uh, then you excite this from this uh, D level to another D, uh, I mean, uh, higher D level, then the energy used to excite this uh, to, to this electron is lower compared to uh, when it was at uh, cubic symmetry. So that's how we interpret that shifting of the shifting of this band towards low frequency is because uh, somehow this you you reduce the uh, you you reduce the splitting level between two, uh, two, two orbitals. And there was, there was another, uh, like uh, uh, if, if you see the spectral change uh, towards low frequency, one can also 
argue that it could be the delocalization of the uh, mm, charged particles. But uh, then in that case, one, one could observe uh, somehow the, uh, that one could observe this drew data, but at lower frequency, means you can't see any shift in the uh, reflectivity level. So that's why this delocalization of the uh, charges is somehow not the... Uh, so the crystal field symmetry is broken because of the pressure and that's what exactly. is giving you the matrix element. But I want to come back to the question that somebody asked, well, what is the matrix element? Uh, why is a parity now not a, uh, a conserved number? Uh, sorry? Earlier on you said because of parity that matrix element vanished, yeah, yeah. right? Now, which wave functions are you taking for which the Z, the, that uh, operator, is its expectation is non-zero? Because I'm taking, have, I'm, uh, I'm taking like uh, from from this state, which are non-degenerate and two are degenerate. Uh, uh, sorry. D Y Z and D X Z are degenerate, but all the others are non-degenerate, right? D Y Z, yes, other are non-degenerate. So. What's the wave function between which you are sandwiching the Z operator? Uh, means okay f from 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 this data one can say that it's from uh, okay first thing that's that's only a general picture. It's not that uh, uh, that it's I mean the level of splitting or the energy difference between two orbitals is exactly the same ratio. It's not like that. It's just a general That's picture. The point. the point is that a symmetry has been broken yes. and so you're getting a dipole moment. Yes. So that dipole moment is computed in which wave function, initial and final? It's, it's from, uh, the, uh, from this state to this. Yeah, that's the point. It can be from this to this, or it can also be from this to this. So, पहले जब spin selection rules की बात की थी, कौन सी इसमें transitions पहले से forbidden हैं? कुछ हैं ऐसी जो पहले ही आपने कहा ना angular momentum selection rules हैं, तो वो forbid करती कुछ transitions को, तो इसमें कुछ हैं ऐसी जो Means you, within uh, you ca you can't uh, uh, have uh, means excitation from D to D. Okay, because the change in angular momentum is zero. Uh, exactly. Orbit line. Exactly. So, फिर कौन सी है initial or final stage इनकी आवाज़ है? That that's that's uh, uh, okay. I I'm I'm still not sure. Means the point is when when you have this. Uh, like change in the late symmetry, right? Then, then you are not anymore in cubic, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in this way, you also means when you're, uh, it can be that like uh, means if you have a t orbital of uh, one one atom, mm -hmm. okay, and the d orbital of other atom, and they they can't be that. Uh, it's possible that they are not at the same same orientation. Then, then you then you add. Uh, some odd uh, character to it. Then it's not. Otherwise, always means if you are uh, again talking about D to D, whether it's a tra uh, tetragonal symmetry or whatever, then that's 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 forbidden. That's just uh, means a kind of uh, uh, assumption that because this uh, why it's, it's allowed. D to D. The thing is that rotational symmetry has been broken, yeah. and it's the crystal symmetry which now matters, which has to be respected. Yes. So these are all d orbitals. If you could move the other atoms away. Yes. You have to wind up now. So already one hour. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry. So I will. I will quickly. Yeah. Also, experiments. I'm telling you that this cubic to tetragonal transition. Usi vakt nazar aayegi jab aapke paas single crystal hoga. Kya main thi keh raha hu? Is or wo particular aligned hai? No, no, not, 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 not necessary. 
तो कैसे मैं हाउ कैन विजुलाइज कि यू आर अप्लाइंग प्रेशर फ्रॉम ऑल साइड्स इक्वल प्रेशर आइसोटैक्टिक प्रेशर अप्लाई करें एंड यू गेट अ फेज ट्रांजिशन यस ओके for can you get this effect of polycrystalline samples yes yes you can you can get like i mean for for many materials they do this powder xrd and then they they change uh, they see this how the atoms change and then they uh, find the what is the right uh, lattice symmetry means from this infrared from this data i can't tell you for this one has to go for uh, xrd it's just that we 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 are you can say it's a tentative interpretation the point is if if you if if you if your spectral wave is moving to a low frequency one one chance is is, is it going to a be metallic or uh, but then for if, if you see at the low frequency side then you don't see any uh, two day term or uh, so that's why this delocalization is over so that's uh, that's you can say that's my own interpretation even that uh, data is not published at least just ready to for some it for some mission uh shall i go further or? well the if you can write up uh, okay okay uh then i will not go for okay uh, i will summarize uh, this uh, these results like three chromium compounds were investigated in in a broad spectral range and uh, the latest compressibility was uh, interpreted in terms of different size of anions and uh, this chalcogenides compounds they show uh, structure phase transition from cubic to tetragonal and the shift of this uh, uh, even level which we call this uh, octahedral crystal precipitating to where uh, means for chalcogenides towards uh, low frequency which which means that the crystal precipitating is reduced but for oxide it's uh, towards high frequency where we can say that is uh, uh, crystal precipitating is increase and then it's it depends on the time if you uh, another point is uh, that as i mentioned that uh, uh, I, w- i was supposed to construct this uh, microscope and to uh, to measure this uh, high pressure low temperature uh, to measure this high high, tem- uh, high pressure low temperature uh, um, measurements for different materials and uh, for this uh, uh, the basically uh, there are three Uh, main components you have a source and then that's a microscope and then you have a, a ccd spectrograph that is a grating spectrograph so it's 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 a simple way that uh, for transmission mode you you have this uh, different uh, optics like these are uh, spherical mirrors and then this these are plane mirrors so you uh, send the light to this uh, schwarzschild objective which you call this condenser and then you get this transmitted light collected by this another schwarzschild objective and it gives the image at this point at the field stop and uh, there you have uh, uh, different sizes uh, uh, of aperture and then if if you want to view the sample then you send the uh, send the light to uh, towards uh, this uh, in, in this optical uh, line where you put a filter to uh, uh to pass only visible light and block this uv and for measurement mode you just uh, move this mirror in and get the uh, light through this spectrograph and finally you uh, you measure the uh, your spectrum and for reflection mode it's okay for for uh, to to measure the pressure you have a laser and so green laser you shine this uh, on the uh, this ruby crystal and then you get this uh, this transmitted light uh, go through to the spectrograph but for this pressure measurement you change the grating of the uh, spectrograph and for uh, reflection uh, mode you move this mirror out 
So you you let the beam go to this uh, uh, to, to the to the sample. So it's 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 called half mirror because uh, means there is a hole in uh, in this uh, uh, mirror for this uh, in in Schwarzschild objective. So you let the half beam pass through, and then the half of the path is to uh, get this reflected beam through it. And in this way, you. Uh, yeah, you get this uh, reflected beam to the spectrograph and measure your spectrum, and you use this diamond uh, bottom in the same way as a reference. Or one can also use a gasket as a reference, depending what material gasket you are using. And uh, uh, for this uh, for this pressure, you again get this uh, transmitted light, and uh, you change the grating. So here is the test measurement for this uh, for, for this instrument. There's a transmittance and then the absorbance. So it's uh, we compare it with the um, I mean, data measured from this commercial Bruca spectrometer at 1.0 GPA. That's the data from uh, commercial uh, uh, spectrometer, and that's what uh, I have made it. So it's it's uh, how to say. Uh, I mean, one can say that it's uh, okay. Uh, here you see a little bit shift in the, um, the this uh, this small transition. It's uh, because it was not calibrating was not calibrated properly. Otherwise, it's a good it's it's a good agreement with the uh, data from the commercial spectrometer. Okay, here's the outlook. Uh, okay, it's interesting to measure these chromium compounds at low temperature so that you can get uh, access to all these uh, spin allowed DD transition. And then uh, extension to high frequency range is also necessary so that uh, you can get even to, uh, to, uh, to the uh, access to charge transfer excitations too. And at the end, I would like to personally acknowledge uh, my uh, ex-colleagues and uh, to Dr. Alexei Pashkin and Dr. Uh, Surkan and Dr. Uh, Jochen Dysenhofer. And I would like to thanks for the uh, provision of beam time uh, from the synchrotron radiations uh, in Karlsruhe and for financial support uh, this Deutsch Forschung uh, Gemeinschaft and Bayerisch Forschung Stiftung. And at the end, I would like to thank. Yes. thank you. So, we did a lab on the space transitions and we took a 60 degrees per minute, so we did our, all our calculations on that. But if you're looking at some new material which nobody knows, is there like some standard? Like you say, okay, this does not have a transition, and this does have a transition. It's like particle physics, and that's like if the error can do this. So when you're doing new Okay, if, if you if you measure new material, you will uh, definitely you will get some spectrum, and uh, it uh, you have to know that what is the band gap of this material, okay, and uh, then you can say okay where this uh, means electronic transitions are, and then if it's uh, metallic, then you can. Uh, see that it's uh, uh, a true kind of a behavior, and uh, if you if it's insulating, you will see the uh, uh, phonon modes. But you can do first principles calculations as well. Yeah, you can do. You can. That's what Fakhri now said. We do first principles. Calculations and look at the electron band structure and see how it changes the temperature or pressure. But higher point, higher point, the laser the computer becomes strong. It's not about that. This is a partial objective. This is a partial objective? Okay. I think here uh, okay, for Schwarzschild objective is that uh, you can you can uh, get 
image ablation free and then uh, you can uh, means use it for broad frequency range like for other obje uh, objective like normal uh, uh, convex lens or some other there you are limited for the uh, uh, frequency range because you can't use it for the long frequency range but here you can use this uh, even till up to uh, c uh, means 1 to 6 CV Sorry? Yeah, because it's it's uh, uh, it's used as a um, it's a normal condenser for transmission, and that that you call its object. Okay, basically both are uh, you can say she watched it objective, but it's uh, just because it's in 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 a, uh, in a way first for transmission. So it's uh, called condenser. It, it was in the same material. And both the same. Yeah, because uh, the, the point is, it was also a uh, selenide material. Okay, and uh, if if you if you uh, uh, imagine this uh, unit cell of the uh, this chromium spinners, you see it's, it's mostly that uh, are anions, right? Compared to the other other ions, so uh, that's why if if, if you are uh, having like zinc chromium. Mm, selenide or cadmium chromium selenide, then you see almost uh, I mean the structure for uh, transition almost uh, at the same pressure or temperature. Because the other atoms are less compared to the, uh, and it's uh, it's it's I mean throughout in all uh, compounds. Means there are also temperature temperature measurement for uh, these compounds. So there you also see that it's, it's means very close to the uh, close to each other compared to the other oxide or sulfide compound. That's why we uh, we can say that is. Okay, thank you very much.